Hey everybody, I'm Sean. Welcome to another episode of Angling Spiders. Welcome back everybody on today's episode. As you can see, I am standing in my backyard once again and that is because we are currently in that transition to winter. I was hoping to get out in the kayaks at least one more time. Uh, I had a shot this past weekend and uh, ended up having to do some other things and, and actually wasn't feeling that good either. So missed that opportunity. But um, there's always the chance and the possibility that in Calgary, uh, the weather could turn and I could get one more day out there in the kayaks. If not, we are going to be waiting now for the official start of winter and the freeze over and that could take some time. The ice around here last year wasn't really safe until after Christmas and so it's a long period of time without fishing. And so today what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about getting ready for that ice fishing season and some of the things that you should think about looking at as you're going through your gear. So let's jump right into it. All right, so as you guys can see, I've got most of my gear laid out here. It's not everything, but it's a good chunk of the stuff that we take when we go ice fishing. You can also see that there's still some snow in my backyard from the last snowfall we had, and it is supposed to be snowing again by the end of today. Uh, and for the first week of November here, it is supposed to be snowing uh, almost every day up to uh, 30 centimeters or uh, a foot of snow here. So probably gonna be pretty cold this week and we're gonna get a lot of the white stuff so today's a good day to do as much here as i possibly can so so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna show you guys how i go through some of this stuff uh, i'll try to make it a quick one so that this doesn't drag out but i'll give you some hints and tips along the way so first thing i'm gonna start with is the tent <laughs> Okay, so I've got the Frable Bro Series tent set up here and uh, what I wanted to do is go through and just look at uh, how it was setting up and in fact I did notice that I've got one end of one of my poles is broken so I'm gonna have to deal with that so there's a perfect example of why you do this stuff well before you get into the ice fishing season where one of my poles attaches on the inside here to the hub it's broken on the end uh, I was able to get it set up and I could use it that way, but I want to figure out a way to deal with that before I get out there and start using it uh, more on a regular basis. So the next thing that I want to do is actually get inside the tent, make sure that there's no rips, that none of the seams are ripped. I can close it all up because this is uh, a an insulated tent. Close all the flaps, make sure that it's really dark in there. And uh, that'll tell me if there's any light coming through, if I've had any tears or anything. I, I'm pretty sure that I didn't, but that's what you want to do is just make sure very quickly that nothing has changed since the last time you put it away. All right, you guys, everything's looking good. Just a couple more things to look over for the tent here and I'll move on to some other things. So one of the other things that came with this Frable Bro Series tent is these uh, window covers. So if you don't want to be in there in the dark and you want some light to come in, you can put on these plastic window covers with Velcro and then uh, allows you to keep your windows open. You just want to check those over, make sure that there's no cracks in them, that they're still in good shape. These ones are fine. Uh, so I can put these ones back in the bag. One last step here before I jump into other stuff and that is the anchors that screw this thing into the ice. Okay, you guys, so here's the anchors that I use to uh, screw this thing in. Now, these are the ones with the, the rubber coating here, the, the original ones that came with the Frib Bro Series tent. Uh, they work pretty good, but as you may recall from last season, I dropped some of these down a hole in one of the lakes and I had to use a magnet to retrieve them. I did not retrieve all of them though, and so I had to go buy a few more and I just went and bought some off Amazon, some cheap ones. Uh, they work okay, they're, uh, they're not as good as the ones that originally came with the Frable, but uh, they work okay, but it's a good thing I checked because I forgot that I was out on one really windy day last winter and I did bend one of these, and so uh, I'm going to have to get rid of that one. 
I still have enough from the original ones and the replacement ones I bought that I should have enough for this winter so I don't need to buy any more, but I just want to make sure I remove that one. Perfect reminder of why I'm doing this right now. Okay, I'm going to jump on to a couple other things. Okay, the next thing really quick is my sled that I use to carry all of this gear. Typically, the sled's going to be in pretty good shape. Uh, I did store it outside. I was not inside, but uh, that's fine. It's under my deck. It's covered, and so it's in good shape. But why am I bringing it up? The one thing you should check is go over the rope that you use to pull these things with just to make sure that it's not frayed anywhere, that it's not starting to separate because the last thing you want is to get out there this ice fishing season, start going out on the lake, and this thing breaks on you. So just do a quick review of your ropes. Make sure that they're still holding up really well. All right, next up is my Ion R1 Ice Auger. Picked this up last year, absolutely love it. Sure takes the tough work, gotta drill in multiple holes all the time. Of course, you gotta make sure that your battery is still working and that it's holding the charge, which I will do. But of course, the other important thing to do, particularly on one of these 10 inch ones, because that's a big hole that it's drilling all the time, is to check your blades. Now, I will probably have to get another set of these this year. One of the things I did notice towards the end of last year was that they seemed to be dulling a little bit. So uh, I'm probably gonna get another set of these ones, then I'll take these ones off and get them sharpened, put the replacement blades on, and I'll be set up for this season. And then the ones that I take off, these ones I'll get sharpened and then I'll alternate them out. Um, these ones lasted an entire season, so I'm pretty sure I get a one season out of them So I just have to get them off and sharpened and then put the new ones on so uh, Always got to have sharp blades on your ice auger or you're never gonna get through those holes. So Very important Also, it doesn't matter whether you have one of these uh, Rechargeable ones or a manual auger or one of those drill bit augers Check your blades on every one of them Next up is my fishing chair Why do I got to look at my fishing chair a couple reasons? One, there's a whole bunch of pouches in this thing that I typically store stuff in. And so you just wanna go through, make sure that you've got everything cleared out that you don't want in there. For this one, I've got some stuff that's in here. I got some zip ties and a few other things in here. Just make sure it's what you want in there. Um, I was worried at one point that I actually had left some bait in here. Uh, so I'm glad that wasn't in here. And then uh, also, you just wanna test out your chair make sure again that the cushion isn't ripped that you've got no problems so that when you sit down on this thing you don't fall through it onto the ice this one's in great shape because I just picked it up last year and so uh, I know that it's ready to go all right everybody next up is all those gadgets that you're gonna use for ice fishing um, some of you don't have any but for those of you that do I know many of you use your fish finders from your boat or your kayak uh, your portable units some people use live target systems and some people like us use underwater cameras you just want to make sure that not only are the batteries charged and ready to go but that you plug them in and make sure that these things are working well cameras are working you pan them around a little bit um, that you you know you've cleaned off the screens you kind of organize them a little bit so that it's not as chaotic in there i know that if i open up this this thing up right now is not going to be in good shape because we did not spool up the cables as, as good as we should have. Uh, we will go through that and make sure that these are functioning and ready to go. Charged up so that I can pick them up once the season hits and not have to worry about it. So, um, yeah, looking forward to getting back on these again this year. Okay, you guys, the last thing I want to show you here is the fishing bucket itself. And this is where we store all of our miscellaneous stuff. So what I'm going to do, I can tell you that we did not organize this thing. It is still a mess. Look at this. I mean, if I show you this rod, uh, clearly this is going to need some work. We just put it away at the end of the ice fishing season and didn't do anything with it. So I got a lot of work here to do to organize all this, make sure the rods are ready to go. Um, they're all set up and uh, also a lot of the other equipment in here just to clean it up, make it a little bit more organized. All right, everybody. So I'm just going to run through an example of some of the things that we have in that bucket just to give you an idea of some of the things that we keep at the ready for our ice fishing season. Started off here, we've got our homemade jaw jackers. Uh, we have four of these. If you haven't seen us make these, I will put a link to the video up in the corner and down below. Um, these things work great. We've got our rods and our reels here. And as I said, we've got some work to do there. 
We've got four tip-ups now that we just picked up last season that work great, and so we keep those in there. I've got to check the line on those just to make sure that everything looks okay, but I'm pretty sure we put them away uh, the proper way. We've got a bag here full of ice cleats. These things are amazing. You slip them on your boots in the wintertime and you can grip the ice. Uh, we've got enough of those for our whole family. We always keep some spare gloves in there so we've got some extra gloves in case our gloves get wet we usually also keep some waterproof gloves and i do have another set of ones that are even more heavy duty than these so i have to find those because they're missing and i only have one of these so definitely glad i checked because we're missing some of those waterproof gloves got an extra uh flashlight this one actually is a lantern that i can hang from the top of the tent just in case we need some extra light in there got a tube of bungee cords here these are fantastic picked them up at the dollar store for four bucks i got like 10 of them for four bucks and uh, i use these to strap everything onto the sled when we're hauling it out on the ice of course we got a dipper i am probably going to get a bigger one this year i find this one to be a little bit small probably one of those really big stainless steel ones just makes it a lot easier we got some rod holders um for when we're sitting inside the tent. We got the spare battery for the ion. We got my fishing magnet, which has been fantastic. For those of you that saw me drop my um, tent anchors down the hole, this thing was pivotal in having me retrieve those uh, several weeks later. So again, if you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link right now. It is grabbing a bunch of line bells, um, but uh, have that along just in case I drop something down the hole. We've got a head-mounted lamp here that uh, is very useful. It was great when I was staying overnight on the ice. Some jaw spreaders, spare knife. These are some ice grippers. These things are for safety, particularly in the early season when the ice is thin. Um, you just pop them apart. You hang them around your neck, and then if you need to, if you fell through the ice, you can use these to grab onto the edge of the ice, and you've got that for safety. We've got the Mr. Big Buddy heater which has been fantastic, as well as a lighter. And then we've got all of the tent anchors here. Um, the ones I said before that are yellow came with the frable and then the extra ones I picked up. So I got lots of these now. So that's just a few of the things that we keep in that bucket. There are actually a few more things that we put in there. Um, obviously we take our tackle box, we slide it in there. Um, there's the carbon monoxide detector that I mentioned before that we always take with us. We will we'll keep that in there once the, the season starts. So. That, that kit is really easy to take with us. We pack it up and then we just grab it. We've got all that stuff with us. We're ready to go. Fits on the sled really nicely. Now, before I close out today, I just wanted to mention that there are a couple more things that you should do to get ready for the ice fishing season. A couple of them on my list right now to do. Number one, fill up those propane tanks. Um, you gotta have that propane in order to get your heater going. For us, we use a full 20 pound tank. Some people use the smaller ones, but either way, you might want to go stock up on those now. Also test your heater, make sure that there's no leaks in the line, etc. Because you don't want to go get out there on a really cold day and be surprised that you can't use your heater. The other thing that I highly recommend that you might want to do right now is start stocking up on bait. Um, I know here in Alberta, at least last year, there were some bait shortages, particularly for minnows. And so there were some times when it was tough to get a hold of them. You might want to stock up now, get some in your freezer so that you're ready to go if you plan on using bait this ice fishing season. Uh, there you go. Just a quick run through of some of the stuff we're doing to get ready. The last thing we got to do is also go through our tackle boxes and organize them up a little bit and get ready for the ice fishing season lures because the stuff we use is very different than what we use in the summertime fishing. We use jigs. We uh, also use those predator rigs that we uh, hook up for some of those pike to put bait on. So uh, we gotta make sure that we've got everything we need to put onto the tip ups and onto those jaw jackers to make sure that we've got the right gear. And uh, that's a very different loadout from our summer fishing. So hopefully I've given you guys a few things to consider as you're getting ready for the winter that's about to come. And uh, we look forward to getting out there when it finally does hit. Uh, I hope the transition's relatively fast this year, but you never know, it's Alberta. Sometimes it can take a long time. So in the meantime, we will have some other content and uh, we can always go try fishing on the Bow River because it's open pretty much year round. So that's an option for us if we can't do anything else. All right, we're gonna close this one out there. As always, guys, if you liked the video, smash that like button, hit subscribe, and until next time, good fishing.